Hello everybody, hope you've all been keeping well. Um, welcome to the channel and, and welcome to this video on Chana Andral. Uh, through this video I'm just going to be going through some basic uh, care and, and things like tank maintenance, uh, feeding, uh, some of the ways in which you can you should set up your tank and just basically uh, how you keep them in groups and, and, and what, what to expect from keeping these fish. Now this video is about Chana Andral specifically, which uh, are the ones which I'm keeping here. But a lot of the others in this dwarf snake family, a lot of the related uh, fish, they all have very very similar care requirements. So what they need from the tank, how the tank should be set up, their feeding, and the breeding and, and the grouping process, it's all very very similar. So I believe this information should be applicable to those other uh, related fish as well. Okay, for, for those who want to take care of them, uh, who want to keep them first thing first, and this is the most important, and this goes for any uh, snakehead, whether it's the, the dwarf ones or the, the large ones, maybe like uh, the, the emperor snakehead, you need a lid and you need to make sure that that lid is tight and that they can't jump, um, can't jump through it, yeah. Um, they are amazing jumpers. Now, actually, of these six, I originally had five. Um, the first batch of these was originally five. Uh, two squeezed out through a very, very small hole. You wouldn't even believe how small it was. Uh, I woke up one day, uh, two days after putting them in the tank, and I, I found two of these very, very beautiful fish in the floor. It's really heartbreaking, in, in a way. You need a tight lid, and you need to make sure that all the holes uh, are covered up. You, they are able to escape through very, very small holes. So put put a cover over it, uh, seal the holes, uh, maybe put a, put an extra layer of net uh, under under the cover. That's what I do. I've, I've got a net under the cover just to make sure that they can't squeeze out. So do not make that mistake. And I think that's something which a lot of snakehead owners in the past have done. They've woken up and they found fish uh, on the floor. And and these fish generally don't come cheap. They're not. They're not goldfish or, or minnows or anything like that. They, depending on where you are, but wherever you are, I think they're going to be pretty expensive fish. Don't make that mistake. Okay. Secondly, I think, uh, yeah, they keeping them in groups or pairs or solo. Basically, that issue. It's 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 a bit complex. So I have six here, which are juveniles. Uh, at the moment, I'm not able to fully sex them, whether they're male or female at this point. Um, I'm keeping them as, in a group of six with the hope of making sure that they'll be, they'll be able to pair later on. So one male and one female from this group will be able to form a breeding pair. Um, it's, it's tough. Uh, once they do form a pair, which I'm, I'm not sure when that will happen yet, maybe in a few months when they do form a pair, that mated pair will then generally, in most cases, kill all the other fish in the tank, whether it's, it's of the same species or whatever else you've got in the tank so yeah to actually form a pair as in one male and one female you generally need to keep a group um, I've seen I've heard people say that they've done it with just three uh, Chana in total um, I think most people seem to recommend five or six if you just get one male and one female the chances of uh, them pairing up just for that one male and one female seems to be very very slim. Uh, I don't, I can't, I can't think of possibly anyone who said that that's happened. Okay, in a group they are going to fight and they're going to fight quite a lot. All right, I think you will see maybe in this video some of them, some of these fish have got uh, tear marks on their fins. Some of them have lost scales. It's just part of what happens. You, know, you just need to make sure that the tank is large enough that they're not always in each other's faces. You need to give them hiding spaces. But be aware that once that pair uh, does form, if and when you are lucky enough that, to have that pair form, the other fish in that tank, including your very, very precious channels, they're likely to be killed. Okay. Uh, breeding, I'm going to cover that in a, a, probably a separate video later on, but breeding is something else. <laughs> Breeding, uh, I'll, I'll wait till I actually get some results first from breeding before I go through that, but yeah, okay. Um, feeding, I feed, I, I believe in feeding pellets, okay. 
um, there are a lot of people there who, of course, they'll experiment with. Uh, they'll they'll use a lot of live food, say like mealworms, uh, crickets, and other things like that, um, and bloodworms as well. Um, I believe I'm feeding Hikari viper bites, which actually look um, like bloodworms. They're meant to imitate the actual, I think, the actual, uh, the actual visual sight of bloodworms, and they're very, very appealing to fish. Okay, I use Hikari viper viper bites. I think because they're small as well. As these fish get older, I will be able to transition them to some of the other larger pellet foods. But basically, carnivore pellets, uh, things which are suitable for cichlids, uh, work very, very well for chana. Okay. Now, occasionally I do feed, um, maybe once or twice a week, I do feed other foods such as blood worms or, or mealworms and things like that, but I try to keep their staple diet as the pellets. Um, I really do believe that, that yeah, the pellets are a very, very good nutritional source for them. Like, they got everything they need, and I, I think uh, comparing it to like worms and, and things like that, uh, worms, what, what they contain in them in terms of protein and things like that, they just can't compete with the pellets. And I've actually seen the difference of, of this six I've actually got four who re very, very quickly took to the pellets and there were two which were very, very slow to take to the pellets and were still eating bloodworms. And when I compare the size, the color, uh, just the overall health, you, you can actually see this one here, this, this little one here in front. He, he, was, he was one of those who did not take the pellets and, and was just eating bloodworms. And there's a big size difference between the two who, who refused the pellets and the four who actually ate the pellets. Okay, I really do think, and I think a lot of other channel channels would say that pellets are just a much, uh, uh, just a just the best option for them overall. And now, of course, sometimes you'll mix it up, uh, throw in a few other uh, uh, treats for the worms, the live foods, and things like that. But just it's just easier, and it just makes feeding easier um, for you. You don't have to faff around, you don't have to mess around with all, all those live foods all the time. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's better for them in the long run. It just seems to be better. Okay. Um, in terms of the tank, uh, make sure I think the tank is well planted. They really do like a lot of plants. Um, a lo I, I, I use those um, Indian almond leaves at the, uh, at the bottom of the tank. You can see them in some of the photos. You can see those leaves on the tank. Some of them I haven't. I removed them because they were disintegrating and I haven't put in new leaves yet, but they really do seem to like the leaves at the bottom of the tank. They like to uh, go into them, hide in them. They, they seem to really, really appreciate that. Um, a lot of people do keep them in uh, slightly acidic conditions, maybe a pH of around six. Um, if I measure my pH, my pH is around 6.5. I do sometimes add uh, black water extract in the tank, I think. In, I think in this shot here, I actually put in black water extra. You might be able to see the the difference in it. Um, it's not necessary. I, I kind of just did it for aesthetic effect. Uh, I think, as with all snakeheads, they can actually live in very, very, uh, very, very harsh water conditions, which a lot of other fish would just probably die, die instantly in within a couple of days. The snake is a very, very tolerant of poor water, poor water conditions, but it doesn't mean that you should be keeping your fish in poor water conditions all the time okay just make sure your tank maintenance is up to up to scratch i change water i change about 20 percent uh every two weeks i try not to do big water changes big water changes seem to really upset them they seem to get very agitated uh they, they do a lot of flashing uh, on the uh on this on the substrate and they just seem to be agitated so i really try and keep that to to a, a minimum as much as possible but make sure your tank maintenance uh, is in order Make sure you're cleaning, make sure you're scrubbing, uh, make sure you're getting rid of algae. Just general fish keeping, just general fish keeping, uh, uh, just general fish keeping routines, okay? Um, in terms of problems, I think uh, I've kept a lot of these dwarf snakeheads and a lot of them, when I've just, when I just brought them, when I just brought them back home, a lot of them developed this kind of fungal disease. Um, which just seemed to be uncontrollable. I treated it, I used a variety of medicines and I just couldn't get, I just couldn't heal them in any way. I tried antibiotics, uh, antifungals, anything and everything I could get my head. I could just never seem to reverse it. So I think a dangerous period for, for these fish, in particular for owners, is when you just, when they've just arrived from uh, India, which is where they come from, and they've just arrived on that shipment and it just dropped off at the fish store. Uh, you've got to just be very, very careful. And, and unfortunately, it's just kind of luck of the draw. If you get them and, and they're, they're sick, 
and they develop that fungus. Um, it's just very, very little you can do about it. I would, I would definitely try and source these fish from a local breeder if possible, which is where mine came from. And they are, these fish are superbly healthy. Absolutely no problem. They're strong, they, they eat like nothing. They eat like crazy. Okay, but I really, really try and source these fish from, from local breeders if possible and try to avoid those direct imports, which, which come straight from India, okay? Um, yeah, I think look, those, those are some of the tips. I'll probably cover more in, in other videos. I'm planning to do more, but stay tuned and uh, follow the channel and I'll be doing more videos in the future, all right? See you guys.